Welcome back to the program right around Australia. Great to have your company here on Money News. I've got to tell you, I am so excited. A good mate of mine, and I've known her for a long time and the family for a long time, has just absolutely shot the lights out right around the world. Now, this young woman you know, and I know, and you've seen her grow up, and I love this as well, Bindi Irwin. How good is Bindi Irwin? One dancing with the stars in America, for goodness sakes. It's not as though she wasn't known there already, say, for example. Bindi the Jungle Girl, all of these types of things she's done with Discovery Channel. And, of course, you know, the Crocodile Hunter Diaries, all these types of things she's done. So as a result, America knows Wheeler. Guess what? She's on the program. She's on the line right now. Hello, Bindi. How are you, love? You all right? How are you doing, dear? It's so good to get to talk to you. How good is this? I'll tell you. Come on. You are you are absolutely pumped up. The Dancing with the Stars thing. I was standing in the, in the lounge room cheering. I was actually almost crying at the time. I was so happy. Oh, thank you so much, love. <laughs> it was the most unbelievable experience. Honestly, I am just this girl from Australia who loves wildlife, and I had no idea that I would actually be able to learn to dance like that. Our family isn't exactly known for dancing, but it was certainly an experience. Well, all right, go back to the start of that, shall we? When did you actually figure out that you might actually be able to put your two front feet together, as it were? (laughs) You know, it took a while. When I first arrived at the Dancing with the Stars studio, I put on high heels and instantly fell over and watched everyone's confidence just wash away into the distance. And so... It took a few weeks of really just being like a wobbly giraffe until I finally got the hang of it. I think after the second or third show, I felt like I could actually perhaps dance Ooh, <laughs> and make this? it. But, you know, what's amazing is that it was it was a great way to be able to share who I am and to be able to share my journey and my story. And I never imagined that dance would be able to do that for me. Well, so. give, me, give, me, give me a little idea about this. When you got the work boots on and you're at the Australian Zoo and you're actually out there with the animals and stuff, did you have a little bit of a, little bit of a shimmy every now and again or not? <laughs> you know, honestly, every now and then, some of the animals like to dance. I don't know if dancing with crocodiles counts, though, really. Not quite. I don't think it does. Dancing around them more than anything else. Yeah. But it's just, but much. so as it went forward, I mean, clearly, tell me about this because I know you've just finished your uh, finished your HSC. I know you've been studying a bit of business along the way. Did your business brain start to kick in as this Dancing with the Stars thing got deeper and deeper? I feel like it might have helped me a little bit. I did. I just graduated and um, taking a couple courses in in business and in tourism, and and that's really wonderful. But I think that it was quite. It's kind of one of those situations where you really have to analyze it to figure out how to be able to continue on. I mean, for me, I I came into this with no dance experience whatsoever, and I found that just the determination is what carried me forward because I didn't have anything else to fall back on. I'm not a dancer. And so when I approached this, I just had to put my heart and soul into it. And with enough studying and, and just trying my absolute hardest, staying late with the rehearsals. It was, you know, six or seven hours, seven days a week of just straight dancing. And oh. so you have to have that determination. And I've got to say, honestly, my life here at Australia Zoo, my family, just the, working within the family business, it really helped to set me up so that I was able to mentally tackle this project. Well, of course, it was just fantastic to have uh, have Robert, have your mum there, the whole thing, just sitting there watching this whole thing go by. So it was really, it was a team effort, wasn't it? Like it always is with the, with the Irwins, I've got to say. It always is. We're always a team, <laughs> we're always together. My family's so sweet. My toenails were all falling off, so they're gluing them back on and oh. helping me to put disinfectant on all of my cuts. Oh, no. And so they were they were wonderful, but you know it, it's so important to have that that support, no matter what you do in life, and that's the only way we're really able to succeed is by having that support of those around you. I mean, it's surrounding yourself with people who can lift you up and tell you to continue on because life life does have its challenges. Life can be really fun and wonderful, but. It can also be quite a challenge. So I, have I've, my family there with I've got to say, but the one thing that your family has been successful in doing for a long period of time is actually cracking that US market. Now, you've done it again here big time. There's no doubt about that. Um, now, your old man did the same thing as well. He knew how to do it. You've got a path into that US market. And of course, being a very big market, that business brain of yours right now is sitting there and saying, okay, there's going to be a lot of opportunities. We've just got to pick the right ones and make certain we're true to the brand, true to all of those things, because that's the kind of strategic 
strategic way to think about this, isn't it? Oh, it's so true. And I feel like uh, America is a wonderful place. And, and every American that I met, really, when I'd start to talk about Australia, not, not one of them didn't say that they, they wanted to come and visit and they wanted to be a part of our our culture and just experience it. And for me, I really think that, that tourism is the way to go. I mean, Americans, if we can get them to come here, they spend a lot of money and then they go home again. And it's terrific. So, you know, we, we have we have Australia Zoo here and we're always trying to think of ways to be able to bring people into the community so that we're all working together. And tourism is such a huge part of, you know, our, our entire, our culture as a family. I mean, we're... we're in the tourism industry. And so while I was over in the States, just really trying to represent Australia and to encourage more visitation. And I think so far it's, it's paid off, um, which is great. We've met so many people coming into the zoo and just traveling around Australia who said that they'd watch Dancing with the Stars oh, and how good's that? to take a trip. I'll tell you the other thing also, just thinking about this, is clearly you've been in the, in the U.S. in particular. Uh, I mean, through, uh, you know, discovery and through all of these types of things that you've been involved in. And so... The, you know, there, there, are, there are avenues for you. There's options for you. I guess it's always the case of trying to make the right choice because you'll have so many choices coming at you after something like Dancing with the Stars in the Wind. Yeah, and for me, it's all about staying true to who I am. And you have to be able to follow your heart and, and be confident in the work that you choose. I mean, I, I want to make sure that everything that I'm a part of does have a terrific backstory and will make a difference. I mean, I would love to be able to expand my my platform through filming to a, to a wide range of people. Embarking on Dancing with the Stars, it's not exactly a show revolving around conservation, but to be able to reach some 14 million people every single episode, oh, yeah. just talking about wildlife and conservation, people who might not necessarily hear this message, was really wonderful. So being able to choose opportunities to be able to broaden um my my horizons and, and to be able to just continue to educate and inspire people who might not necessarily know a lot about what what we do and who we are. I've got to tell you, it was about conservation. It was about trying to conserve your, your toenails more than anything else, for goodness sakes, Bindi. <laughs> Three or four, and super glued the rest of them on. Oh, that's At killing me. Point, it looked like my feet had a flesh eating disease. It's it unbelievable. Ridiculous. Well, listen, I tell you what, this is just so, I, I've got to say, so thrilled to have a chat to you as always. It's just great to get you on the program and talk about this, but it's also that little thing about the business because you've always understood the business. You've always understood about family business. That's what this has been about. And I've got to say, it is just right. Tra- By the way, before I let you go, my mate Robert, how is he traveling? Because I know he's always been a bit of a, a, a fan of, uh, the old money minute on the Today Show that I do. And uh, I, I, is he all right? Is he in good shape? I know he had a birthday the other day. He did. He turned 12 the other day here to show you, Zoo. And um, he always talks about you. I have to tell you, while we were in the States, all he would do every single morning, we'd turn on the news and he'd be like, I really miss Ross. <laughs> <laughs> So we're, oh. he's happy to be home, and he's been avidly watching you each and every morning. Can I just say, Bindi, you, when you are so kind, you're a good girl. I know that in the family business, in great hands at the moment, and with great opportunity, which I'm so thrilled to see as well. And our great guest, our special guest on our program tonight, Bindi Irwin, the winner of the American Dancing with the Stars, and also, I've got to say, just a great Aussie as well. Great Aussie chick. There she is, Bindi Irwin. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much, love. Talk to you soon.